Hi, my name is Carrie, but my friends call me Tony, which I prefer. Uh, this YouTube channel is to expose three racist judges in the Los Angeles family court system. If this is your first time watching a video on this channel, um, I am documenting the Jim Crow-like treatment I experienced by the hands of these savage racist judges. Um, for over 20 years, I was married to a white guy who is an abusive alcoholic. And he actually worked in the social service um, industry or the social service field for over 20 years as an executive in the Pasadena area. Uh, coincidentally, this racist judge, Sarah Heidel, resides or lives in the Pasadena area, Pasadena, Los, Pasadena California. Um, and uh, again, this channel is to expose these three racist judges and document the Jim Crow-like treatment I experienced for over a year. Um, for over a year, uh, these three, yes, three racist judges, they passed me around and tried to beat me into submission um, because I spoke out about the um, inequality I experienced. Um, that was really very clear because my husband is white and I'm a black woman. Um, so what they did, just like they had their knee on George Floyd's neck, they have their foot on my neck and they have for over a year. Um, they tried to beat me or whip me like they did slaves in slavery. They tried to whip me into submission like nigga get in your place. Um, I started this series. I married a white guy. Now three racist judges are trying to annihilate me pre-George Floyd. Um, I am attempting to document every aspect um, of my divorce hearing um, so you guys can see exactly what occurred and how it occurred. Um, I had a challenge <sighs> completing everything. I'm still in the midst of everything. I'm going from the very beginning, every court hearing, every trial. Because um, I'm experience some issues with time delays or time constraints, I think it's important that I go ahead and tell you um, very quickly um, what they've done, what, what, actually, what actually happened. I'm going to try to sum it up on this video. Okay, in the video series, I married a white guy. Now three racist judges are trying to annihilate me. Um, I took the exploratory approach to disseminating the information. I was given the viewer the opportunity to review the materials and investigate um, the details of the events as they occur so you, the viewer, can come to, up to your own conclusion. Um, you can go to um, watch the video series, I Married a White Guy and Three Racist Judges Are Trying to Annihilate Me. I'm still producing it. I think as of today, I'm on part four. Um, but also, um, there's additional information on the website, Judge Sarah Racist.com. The transcripts and the doc, um, and other documents are located on this website. So as I said, when doing the video series, I took an exploratory approach to allow you to go look, see what happens, and discern on your own what's actually occurring. Um, in this video, I'm going to do a explanatory approach. I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. Um, and I'm doing that because um, as of today, I'm having some challenges as to my options um, legally um, and time constraints. So um, to get into it, Again, I was married to an abusive white guy for over 20 years. Um, and uh, it all started pretty much um, on the spousal support hearing. 
um, this racist judge, Sarah Hydell, did not award me any spousal support. My husband made in excess of seventy, one hundred and seventy thousand dollars, one hundred and seventy thousand dollars. I I can't give you an exact figure because I haven't seen his tax returns. I think since twenty eighteen, but he makes over one hundred and seventy thousand dollars a year. Um, and technically, I'm supposed if I was a white woman, um, I'm supposed to have gotten between forty two and forty five hundred dollars a month in spousal support. This racist judge, Sarah Hydell didn't award anything um, and it was her attempt to um, malign me, to be, prevent me um, from having options to legally um, defend myself. She, um, the thing that she did, I, I, I'm going to try my best to stay focused and get through this without getting too emotional but it's very hard for me because what she did to me as a black woman, it's heart-wrenching. And it's what goes on in America every day. And the purpose, that I have several um, objectives for doing this video series. One, I need to shine a light on racism and how black people endure racism, okay? Um, specifically, we are protesting, we speak out about it, but we're not being um, how should I say, intelligent or strategic or effective in combating racism. It starts at the top. It starts with the people in power. That man felt comfortable putting his knee on Judge Ford's neck in front of the world because he knew when he go before the judicial system or the court system or the American uh, power structure, they're going to side with him. Um, another purpose reason for this is um, I'm trying to let black women know that in order for us to sincerely stop this, to make this end, we have to do it um, cooperatively, together. We have to stick together. This racist woman, and it all began... Um, the first couple of court hearings, she was nasty and disrespectful. She looked at me like a nigga, get in your place. I'm not going to go into too much details. The details are on Judge Sarah Heidel is a racist um, website. And also in the video series, I Married a White Guy. Now three racist judges are trying to annihilate me. So what actually occurred, um, again, it started with her not... Um, a, um, ordering spousal support and um, a couple other things occurred um, in the video series I explain and this is a legend I'm not sure my husband told me that his lawyer was his girlfriend in the beginning I didn't believe him I thought he was just trying to get under my skin um, but as uh, events unfold and all the unethical things that she did that was was not um, part of judicial or court procedure, the California judicial court procedure, how she did so many things that were unethical. It appeared that she possibly had um, some personal um, stake. It, it, she wasn't, she was never, she's never appeared or behaved um, like she didn't have a vested interest in it. Um, she always appeared like she had an emotional a stake to it. And um, if you go back to Judge Sarah Heidel as a racist and, and go through the videos, I'd tell you exactly what, why, why I believe that. And I have to say allegedly that's his girlfriend. He told me it was his girlfriend. Okay? So I don't know. I go back to look at the videos and um, you can get more information. And anyway, all these things occurred. And so um, I attempted to have Judge Sarah Heidel removed from my case multiple times do, doing motions, legal motions. Each time I did that, um, Judge Sarah Heidel evaded um, a court hearing. She evaded being removed from the case. And um, again, I'm going to try not to get too much into detail about it, but based on her attitude, her behavior, her, each and every hearing, 
she ordered a route outside what the California law says. Okay? Um, so, an attorney that I hired suggested that I file a motion to have her removed. And she evaded um, the process. Not only did she evade the process, but other people in the court system aided and abetted her um, unlawful attempts of evading the removal from my case. And um, really quickly, I, I, I go on and I give you commentary as to my opinion based on what happened. I'm going to try very hard to just make it explanatory, but it speaks to her being um, racist and her having an emotional invested interest in my case. She should be the most unbiased person within the court system between the opposing myself and the attorneys. But it's really very clear that she was trying to malign me because I'm a black woman. Um, when I actually attempted to have her removed, if she didn't have a vested interest in it, why did she just, um, what do you call it, recuse herself? Um, so, and again, I tried to have her removed, and Judge Sarah Heidel, um, and, which is kind of crazy. Okay, my husband filed for um, divorce in the um, city of Pomona, P Pomona um, court um, system. And he did it strategically to have Judge Sarah Heidel assigned to the case. If you go back to the video series, I Married a White Guy, Three Racist Judges Are Trying to Annihilate Me. You explain, you, I explained to you what actually happened. Um, he filed in this court. Um, they assigned it to this woman um, purposely so she can do all the things that she did to me. Um, and like I said, uh, I spoke out. Once I started noticing that she was being racist in each court here, when you go to the transcripts, I say to her, you know what, ma'am, this doesn't feel right. It feels like you're showing a, a bias to my husband who's white and I'm black. And I say it over and over again, just like Sandra Bland speaks out about, hey, what are you doing? This is what they do to us, you guys. When we say this racism is occurring, this is how they retaliate. Black women, I need you to stay with me, okay? They do this to us because they try to deter us for shining a light on what they've done, okay? So um, what ended up happening through all the different court hearings, and this is what's really crazy, they passed me around. Um, one of the uh, guys um, at the Los Angeles um, Law Library, he asked me, how do you have your case being heard in multiple um, courthouses? It's not legal. It's not constitutional. But they're doing it to me because I'm a black woman. They're doing it to me because I'm a black woman and I have no income. My husband was a sole provider, income provider for the last 10, 12 years of our marriage. Anyway, um, they, she sent me to her boss. I call him Grand Dragon Lawrence Riff. Instead of her boss reprimanding her for obvious racial bias, and you know, you guys, I'm saying it's racial bias because it's obvious it's racial bias. She, at every court hearing, every ruling, she rules outside of what the law says. And I give you detailed accounts on Judge Sarah Heidel is a racist.com with the transcripts. And you can do go to the video series, I Married a White Guy. Now three racist judges are trying to annihilate me. So she sends me to this man. And um, he essentially, I don't even know what to say, the words of what he did to me, you guys. I don't know how to say just describe it. I'm still breathing. But they're trying to choke the life out of me. Literally. Okay. Um, so, quick background. 
I left um, corporate America, I think, in 2018. I sustained a, a back injury. I had several, several medical issues um, for the past 10 years. So my husband and I agreed that I become a housewife. So for the past, like, since 20, 2008, 2007, I, I was a housewife. My husband was a primary um, income earner. And you guys know in the state of California, it is, it is um, community property. Um, the law says that I'm supposed to live at the same lifestyle that I uh, experienced during the marriage. I'm currently receiving food stamps. Okay, my husband, in excess, makes over one hundred seventy thousand dollars. He's a corporate executive. His income is published, so you can anyone can investigate it. What what he earns. I get food stamps. Okay, um, when I finally went before this judge, I told him. And instead of him reprimanding her, he supported her and he reprimanded me. So um, what happened was um, I did this website, Just Sarah Heidel's a Racist, to um, highlight what's happening so the world can see. This is how they malign black people. This is how they systematically do it. And also there's a um, LinkedIn page. So about maybe October of 2019, I noticed the Department of Justice viewed the LinkedIn page, Judge Sarah Heidel is a racist. When I went before this man, the savage, racist, Lawrence Riff, he sanctioned me. And I need you guys to go back and look at my videos. If you're an investigative reporter, Please investigate everything. He sanctioned me without cause. Um, one of the court hearings, um, I wasn't present, and um, I got, you know, I, I don't want to go into too much detail. You can get the details on, um, I read a white guy, three racist judges are trying to annihilate me. But what they ended up doing, and my husband's attorney, this, and these both judges, it's going to be clear. They worked in concert. They um, deed me a vexatious litigant, unlawfully, illegally, without cause. That was so I could not file any motions without an attorney. They gave me no spousal support. I have no income. Each time I tried to do a motion for attorney fees, this judge, once she moved the, the case without telling me, without notifying me, and once she just took it off the calendar, you guys, you got to go back and watch the video. This is, it might appear, oh, this is this married woman who's um, pissed because her marriage didn't go the way, her divorce didn't go the way she um, expected. No. They are maligning me because I'm a black woman and I'm married to a white man. And it's important that you follow along you pay attention and you listen because I'm showing you how they malign us. You know, um, Trayvon Martin, you protested about, we saw, the, we, we saw, we heard the video, the audio. The little boy was taking a shortcut to go home. He had candy. A white man murdered him. Murdered him. Okay? Elijah McClain was going home for buying juice and they killed him you're protesting you on Instagram on Twitter you're talking about it you got to take action and you got to identify why it's happening well why it's happening because they're racist and they want to maintain power but we want to ask in a democracy like America how is this happening I'm showing you. Go to Judge Sarah .com. Watch my video series. I married a white guy. Three racist judges are trying to annihilate me. I'm going to demonstrate to you how, because we all protest about um, Trayvon Martin. You want to know how? Does anyone? So really briefly, I'm going to say to you, because I'll tend to get into the details and it takes too much time, but I just want to point out to you, um, this is not about me being angry about a divorce. 
this is this I'm giving proof and evidence to the American people, to black people, to black women. This is how they do it. When we and you know, I I my husband said to me, um, you wasn't angry when you were benefiting from the white privilege. Yes, I've lived in suburbia for the past 20 years. Um, I'm a black person in America. Just like you, I experience racism every day. Okay? Um, so it's sisters out here who want to stand what I'm saying. And, I, and I'll, I'll tend to get deep into it because I want you to understand and recognize how this is happening. Not why. We know why. Um, Jim Crow era hasn't left. These white races are obvious. Um, they're so transparent. And um, you guys, like that, I just, I need you to understand. You got to be accountable. We have to be accountable. They're doing this to me because they don't think that you're going to support me. They don't think that you're going to speak out and protest and call them on the carpet. But this is the Los Angeles family court system. The assistant head judge, Grand Dragon, Lawrence Rift, illegally, unlawfully sanctioned me. And I'm going to get into what he did by sanctioning me. She found me as a vexatious litigant, so I couldn't file, I couldn't um, do any more motions to um, protect myself and do what the what, what my um, rights are as American citizen. And this man sanctioned me illegally, and it is being covered up. Okay. Um, and I, and I, I tend to go back to these other current other events because um, I need you to follow along because maybe as a black person you think, well, they're racist. This happens to us every day. Why are you shocked? Why are you surprised? Um, because it's time for it to stop. Um, and we have to be strategic and intelligent. We have to make a plan and we have to implement the plan. Um, I want to say, uh, I'm going to get back into what happened with these racist people. Because then I want to, honestly, I, I, I struggle really hard because it's when I talk about it and tell you details, I relive it. So it, it's detrimental to my psyche. Just like I told you, remember when I say how you they whipped us, the way they whipped us as slaves. You see, you see the the, the depiction, the pictorial, how you whipped is so you can remember the pain. So your body does what is necessary to for, prevent from having this pain. When they whipped slaves for whatever reason. Their goal was to deter them from this behavior. So they would whip you. And when you have pain, you remember the pain. So your normal action is to, to, to refrain from the attitude, behavior, or action that causes pain. Okay? Um, and I'm in a lot of pain. But black people, I love you. Black people, I love you so much. You have no idea. I'm a black person. I love people. When you go back and you research who I am, I love people in general. I'm not a racist. I'm, I don't have any bias towards anyone. Um, racist attitudes and behavior come from insecurity. It comes from a need to be in power. And you need to be in, when you have a need to be in control and be in power, that comes from a place of insecurity. And I don't feel insecure to anyone. I love everybody. I particularly have a thing for women. I love women and I want women to be happy. Um, I love black people. I love black women. So that's the purpose of me um, 
sharing this information. So I need to go in and tell you exactly what happened. So going back to <laughs> the story, as to summing it up being explanatory versus exploratory. So, like I said, I attempted to have this um, judge removed. And she sent my case to um, her boss in Los Angeles at a different court um, house, with a different court system, a courthouse, a different court. Um, and she did it so he can malign me. So she can, she, you know, and, and black people, I want you to understand this. This judge, Sarah Heidel, was a judge for less than 13, 14 months when she took my case. Okay. Her boss, another white man, got his hands dirty. Okay. To protect her. Because I said she was racist and I called her out for what she was doing. Okay. In the courtroom, I told him, I said she's a racist. And she's, you know what he said to me? He said, that's your opinion. Being impartial, that statement shouldn't have been made. Him saying, it's my opinion, infers that he disagrees with me. Okay? He does it. He, 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 do you understand what I'm saying? So, that statement alone shows bias in her favor. Which it shouldn't be because that's his boss. Um, so when she moved it, when my case has been moved everywhere. You guys, if, investigative reporters, if you investigate my case, you'll see that they didn't do it. They, they didn't do what the law says they're supposed to do. They went outside the judicial court procedure. Um, so I filed an, another motion because each time she tried to evade it um, to have a disqualified for racial bias. It went to him. Okay? While this motion is on the calendar, they're not supposed to do anything. Everything relating to my case is supposed to stop. He reviewed the motion. The motion was this thick because I have evidence and exhibits demonstrating what she did. So what this savage racist Lawrence Rift did he sanctioned me. He said during my divorce hearing that I couldn't submit any financial information, that I couldn't submit any kind of exhibits. And you know, when this happened, my husband's lawyer giggled and laughed. She thought it was funny what they did to me. Okay? My husband was born with white privilege. My husband's wealthy. His father passed away. His mother is not far from passing away. And when she dies, he's going to inherit millions. Okay, I was a housewife for over 12 years. I have no income. I have several medical issues. And there's no reason for them to have done what they did to me other than I'm a black person. Okay? Um, so, he sanctioned me and said he prevented me from submitting all this evidence. And the reason why he did it because he reviewed the motion against her and it was this thick. He recognized that I can make a statement and say this will happen and I can validate it with um, evidence demonstrating it. So when he sanctioned me, you guys, he was saying, nigga, stay in your place. How dare you challenge us white judges? Um... So I need to tell you actually um, some information I want to tell you. So I attempted to go and submit information um, about my divorce. What I was trying to do was subpoena my husband's bank records because he has tens of thousands of dollars that's marital assets and they wouldn't let me include it. Um, they actually, you guys... They ordered that I pay him. Okay, you guys. Um, if you haven't watched the video series, I married a white guy. Not three racist judges are trying to annihilate me. You don't know that I'm suffering from post-concussion syndrome. Post-concussion syndrome. And I have a horrible case of um, insomnia, so I don't sleep. I haven't slept a straight four hours in over ten years. So I have a serious issue with my train of thought. Okay, so I'm, I'm, and, and, and be I'm begging you to please... Follow along with try to be um, cohesive. <laughs>
<laughs> in the dissemination of this information, okay? But I want I, the specific things that I want to tell you. So, um, like I said, they um, I saw the uh, I'm gonna actually I'll I'll, I'll post the um, screenshot of the Department of Justice went to this website, uh, not to the website, went to the LinkedIn account. There's a LinkedIn account, Judge Sarah Hardell is a racist. And you know on LinkedIn, when you can see your visitors. They give you um, they give you um, notice, alert us to your visitors. And one of the visitors was the, the Department of Justice. And this is when my divorce case went from bad to horrendous, okay? Um, and I, I wanna tell you specifically, um, cause I have names of things. Okay, so what happened was this judge on one of our court cases, um, I think it was, I want to say maybe January the 2nd or January the 7th of 2020, um, this judge bullied me into a court hearing. Um, when he asked me about assigning the court hearing, I tried to say to him that it wasn't a good time, the date wasn't good because I still had a motion. I had several motions on the calendar. I had a motion for um, uh, attorney fees. I had a motion... Um, for change of venue, and I had a motion, um, one other motion, I don't remember, but when he, so what he did was, this racist, this racist savage, Judge Lawrence Riff, during a hearing, he illegally, unlawfully sanctioned me. If you go back and look at the transcripts, he had no reason, no legal reason to sanction me. Okay, um, during the same court hearing, he tried to um, assign a court hearing March the 6th. When he asked me, because he has to get both parties, um, ask both parties, when I tried to decline, he cut me off and he threw me out of the courtroom. He had the bailiff walk me out of the courtroom because he was trying to push the court hearing. Okay. Um, and I'm going to try not to go into too many details because I need to make this short and concise. Um, I tried to submit information about my divorce. This clerk, her name is Kelly something. Kelly Fitz something. Um, you can see what happened was I was trying to submit my evidence for my divorce. And this was in Los Angeles court. The Pomona court judge, Sarah Heidel, had put notes in the system. They would not let me submit my information about my divorce, about my income, and about my specific information. Okay? You see this, this clerk, Kelly, I don't know how to say her last name. I can't really read it. But you see her stamp. She crossed it out and she gave it back to me. I asked for a supervisor. The supervisor's name is at the court system. So what I'm trying to explain to you, I want you, this is what happens. How the um, Central Park Five, when you want to know how five minority boys went to prison for years for something they didn't do, other people have to be a party to it, okay? It's, it's checks and balances, the different departments, and it should be independent. These independent departments should work independently, but they don't. They work in concert with the power structure, and the power structure is in favor of white supremacy. It's the world we live in, and I'm not, I'm not succumbing to it. We have to fight it, okay? We have to combat it. We combat it by shining a light on it. So this woman's name... I think her name is Cheryl Mara, M-O-R-A. Because what ended up happening was, when I was in the courtroom, I mean, in the, in the um, when I was at the uh, clerk's office to submit my information, um, and this woman gives me back my documents. I'm trying to submit my information, okay? You see, this is when I tried to submit it. She stamped it, she crossed it out, she gave it back to me. This is not going to be on file at the court here, at the courthouse or in the court documents because she gave it back to me. When I asked her 
to give me a supervisor, this woman, Cheryl Mara, supervisor at the, I guess it's called, it's called the court's clerk off, clerk, the, the court, court's clerk, she's a supervisor, she told me that Judge Sarah Heidel would not allow me to submit documents without her approval. She's in Pomona. Now my case is being heard in Los Angeles. They called the sheriff on me, or the bailiff, whomever. This one sheriff, his name is Castro Ramos, R-A-M-O-S. I wrote down his name. There were three Latino, I don't know if they're called sheriff, um, I don't know if they're called, um, bailiffs, security, or whatever. They came to the, um, to the court, court, court clerk to, to remove me. I wrote down his name. I'm, I'm, I'm pointing him out because he was nice and he was, he was respectful. The other two were nasty and disrespectful to me. Okay? All I was doing as a black woman was trying to submit my documents to this court. Okay? And the racist judge, Harry Heidel, have put notes in the system now allowing me to. This, this racist judge, Lawrence Riff, if you're an investigative reporter, this is the story because he has no reason. I did nothing. All I ever did was try to have a fair case. I was a housewife for over 12 years. My husband made an excess of $170,000. There's nothing I needed to do. All that I needed to do was go to court, say we're going to get a divorce, show our assets, and they split them. They, they, they order what the law says, what they order for white people. That's all they had to do. But because I kept saying, you know what, this is not right, because I questioned what they were doing, this is them saying, nigga, stay in your place. Um, I want to also say this to you really quickly, and I know I need to sum this up because I want this video to be not too long. So, this is the court document. On December the 11th, I submitted a motion in the Los Angeles Superior Court. This says, Respondent's motion to disqualify Judge Sarah Heidel using the code 144, Bias and Prejudice of Judge. Motion to disqualify Judge Sarah Heidel for judicial misconduct involving conduct in violation of the California Code of Judicial Ethics, abuse of or, or, of, or content and sanctions. Okay, the clerk, her name is LaShonda Mosby Keys. She wrote in the date. So the date was January the 13th, 2020 was this hearing. Okay, January the 19th, 2020 was my court hearing and Superior Court number two where Judge Sarah Heidel has sent my case to, okay? On January 2nd, I went before this judge. He refused to hear it. Not only did he refuse to hear it, he sanctioned me. He sanctioned me, he refused to hear it, and he assigned a court date. What the law says, if there's a motion to disqualify a judge or have it removed, everything involved in the case must stop. It didn't stop. They pushed it forward and they maligned me. You have to go back to the documents. You have to go back to the transcripts. I'm going to tell you what they did to me and how they hurt me. The guy I was married to for 20 years was an abusive alcoholic. I documented my husband's abuse. In declarations I explained, I told how he slammed me in the wall and my girlfriend um, witnessed it. <laughs> and you guys, these videos are long, long because I always give you commentary. In the video series, I married a white guy and now three racist judges tried to annihilate me. I tell you this story. One day he came home from his golfing. He would go out and golf and get drunk all day. I was upstairs with my girlfriend. He didn't know she was here. She was in the bathroom. He ran upstairs and he slammed me against the wall. She caught him. And just by chance, Nick Cannon, her daughter, the girl who witnessed it, is married to Nick Cannon's um, brother. She saw him slam me against the wall. 
in my documents, I submitted evidence from back as far as 1993. When you are an abuser, there is history of abuse. Okay? Now, you guys need to understand, my husband worked in the, in the family court system. He has for over 20 years. He's an executive. Okay? This is what he's white, male, privileged, and he, and get, he clearly has ties to these people in the court system. Okay? The racist judge, the last one they assigned, it wasn't white. He was Japanese. You know what they do and how they do it. Okay? I documented all the abuse I sustained by the, my husband. Letters with him apologizing. Cards with him apologizing. Him saying he has a drinking problem. I submitted where he sent me screenshots of his AA book. Triple, his, his um, AA. Okay, for the last couple of years. My husband's an alcoholic, you guys. And so, go back to the video says, I'm married a white guy, three racist judges are trying to annihilate me. I'm not mad at my husband. I love my husband. My divorce, my, my, family, my marriage is over. I love him. He's, he, I love him. I married him. And I stayed married to the white man for 20 years. He is... He's troubled. Okay? Um, he was an alcoholic. When I go back and I look at it, he was an alcoholic since we were like 21, 22. Okay? Um, I, technically, I shouldn't have continued with, enduring the abuse, but I knew he was an alcoholic. And I grew up... I have relatives who are alcoholics. So I never, ever stayed mad at him because I know he had a disease. And each time I tried to tell this family court system, this man is an, is an abusive alcoholic, instead of them addressing, each time I said it, just Sarah Heidel, um, Grand Dragon Lawrence Riff, racist Ju Lawrence Riff, this last judge, Bruce Owaski, I'm not saying his name right, because he, the, the, the Japanese judge I don't like to talk about, because that's, the, that's when the oppressed becomes the oppressor. And he hurt me the most because they picked him specifically because he wasn't white. And what he did, the, he, all of them did bad things to me, okay? But emotionally I'm hurt most by him because that's the oppressed becoming the oppressor and it's really very sad that you endure throughout your life in America regardless of what nationality you are. If you're not white male, you experience racism, bias, discrimination. It's just the world we live in. Okay? So, um, when it been happening, I said they forced me to this trial and they... <laughs> They made me the abuser. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm laughing. Cause I'm laughing because how, I'm sorry that and I know I shouldn't laugh. I make a lot of it. And people might think that I laugh at the most unusual thing. But they made me the abuser when my husband was the abuser. So what they ended up doing, they didn't take any of my debt. For the last two years of our marriage, I put a lot of our um, marital uh, uh, expenses on the credit cards, and I'm going back into detail. Um, my husband got a gift from his family every year between twenty-five and thirty thousand um, dollars. We had a joint um, fund that it was in primarily in his name, though we had a fund that a mutual fund that g gave us a yield uh, um, a return every January. So how we would live in, if you live in a, if your family, you, this is how you navigate. Some people pay off their bills with their income taxes. We our income was too high. We didn't get taxes. We paid taxes. So what we would do every year at the end of the year, we would pay off our bills with this money he got from his family and this mutual fund. For the past two years, he didn't give me enough money. He used to give me at least he used to give me at least half of it, not from me to pay off these bills. Every year he would give me at least ten thousand dollars to fifteen thousand dollars to pay off. The last two years of our marriage, the the year before the last our, the last year he gave me five thousand dollars. The last year he gave me five hundred dollars. I had all this debt that was 
marital expenses. They didn't count. They did not let me submit my debt to them. Okay? Because she didn't assign um, spousal support, my credit cards went to default. Okay? Um, and, 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 and black people, this is not about me being mad about my marriage. This is white people trying to maintain racial power. This is white people saying, black woman, how dare you speak up? How dare you come and challenge these white judges? Okay? So, what ended up happening was, his, his unethical attorney, the day of the hearing, gave me this document, I think it's called 271. They asked me to pay his attorney fees. I'm not a lawyer, but she's not supposed to give it to me the day of the, <laughs> of the hearing. She handed it to me. She gave it to me while me and my son were sitting in the court. This racist judge, or did I pay his attorney fees, my husband's attorney fees? They, on his 401, they gave me a quarter of his 401. They're supposed to give me half. They said they <laughs> found me to be the abuser. My husband was the abuser. He was the abuser. I'm trying to think what else did they do that was bad. It's some other stuff on there. Um, since that time, my husband dropped me off his, his health insurance. This is COVID. Currently, this is time of COVID. My doctor called me to um, for a referral. And they call and they say they're calling me, asking me about my insurance. He dropped me off his insurance. About a month ago, he dropped me off of his, his off of his um I was on his automobile insurance, on his um car insurance, and he dropped me off of it. You know, I'm I'm sitting here trying to tell you guys all what was important that, that they did to me. Um He on his um, he had debt that he put on there. He put credit cards on there that he got after the we we separated. They made they're making me pay for his 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 his, his credit cards. When he put credit cards on there that were um, that he got after we were separated, they did all kind of illegal stuff to me, you guys. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I, I think this is all the information I want to tell you guys. Um, I'm still fighting this. And, you know, oh, I'm going to say this. This girl named Monica Rivera, Riviera. I'm going, I'm going to read this to you really quick, you guys, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to um, close it out. I want to tell you guys this, and I'm gonna I'm gonna post it in here on YouTube. On YouTube, this is a YouTube video, you guys. Um, I got a screenshot of it. Monica Rivers. I don't know if she's a black woman, but on the YouTube account, <laughs> this is YouTube. You guys, it's so crazy. On the YouTube video, um, one of the comments, Monica Rivers says. Six days ago, sweetie, you better pray to God to get you out of this that situation. We watched the video. We can watch the video all day, but what good is that going to do you? Anywho, that's what she said. And Monica Rivers, I don't know if you're a black woman, <laughs> but this is why they do this to us. I need you to watch the video because I need you to shine a light on this. I need you to help me call these three racist judges out for their racial injustice to me. Because what I need you to understand, if they did this to me, I'm a college educated black woman. I'm tired and I'm beaten down and I'm broken. But I'm a resourceful, strong black woman. There are people in that go to family court because they grew up with alcoholics, drug abuse, they don't have the proper education. Their son, their children go through the court system, maybe from vandalism or 
being juvenile delinquents and they get in the court system. And this judge, Lawrence P. Riff, is the assistant head judge of the family court system in Los Angeles. Okay? If they're doing this to me, what are they doing? One girl emailed me. I talked to her. Maneen, girl, I'm not going to say her name right. Maheen, my niece, she got a cute name. I have these postcards of Judge Sarah Hydell. Matter of fact, I'm going to I got these postcards. And I gave the postcard to a um, social worker at court. She gave the postcard to this girl. This girl is involved in a battered wife Facebook club. It's a battered, battered women Facebook group. She me messaged me, these racist judges send the kids back to the white men when they admit to sexual abuse. Y'all go back and watch the series. I, 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 I tell you about stuff that happens this Latino woman and this judge Sarah Heidel clearly favors the white husband who is accused of being abusing his, his son. Social services there. I don't want. I can't get into detail about this, but as of today, I've got to. Um, I'm still having issues with the with the um, court. It's COVID. Um, it's COVID. So. I'm at home, <laughs> you know, um, and I want to say this really quickly, then I'm going to close this out, but um, this relates to COVID, okay, you guys, it can relate to current events. If you are watching the news and see California, Florida, Texas, all these states, um, Corona is, is um, having a rise in people contracting and death rates are higher than what they were in March when we locked down. Let me explain to you, and, it, and, it, and it's an analogy or very similar to what happens with black people and racism and inequality in America. The reason why we're still dealing with, dealing with, with the COVID and it's not, um, we haven't, okay, one of the reasons why, one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why um, we're losing the fight to COVID is because we're not on the same page. In America, there are different states, and they allow the different states to determine on what's done. Okay? If everyone was on the same page and had the same agenda, okay, with COVID, the primary agenda, everyone's agenda should be to combat it, to minimize it, to isolate it, to where it's not a threat to everyone. Okay, what should have happened cohesively? Everybody should have shut down. Okay, they should have shut down everyone. They should have made sure that each person, you know, the money should be assigned according to need. Now, okay, I'm getting too deep again. But had they shut down everyone all together for 90 days, the sick people would have gotten better and it wouldn't be the continued effective infection rate because we're not on the same page we don't have the same objective with COVID the objective should be to eradicate it from our country but because people have different, different opinions and feelings about it mass school being open and should you go to work should your bars be open that's why it's kicking our ass. Same thing with racism. If you don't like me because I got on a blonde wig, so you don't care about my problem, and you're a black person, that's the problem. If you're a black person, a black woman, your goal should be equality. This video is about me showing you how they malign us. How the people in power maintain power. How they do it systematically. Okay? 
Same thing with COVID. Had everybody, depending on their feelings or emotions about other things, school, bars, if everyone's goal, let's eradicate COVID from America or get a candle on it, minimize it. If that was everyone's goal, we wouldn't be suffering in August when it happened in March. Racism. If our goal is to combat inequality and you are a black person and you know what white people in my videos I'm going to talk to you about how this affects you this affects you too this the same people racism discrimination that's about poor ethics and poor morals okay if this judge will do this to me he don't even know me I did nothing to these people I did nothing to these people, and they're trying to ruin my life. That man put his knee on Judge George Floyd's neck for no reason. Killed him. They killed Elijah McCain. Threw him on the ground, injected him. These are poor ethics and poor morals. We white people. The same people who will do this to uh, to black people because they are unethical and they lack judgment and, and morals. If they come up against you, same thing. When push comes to shove, they gon' they will do unethical and immoral things to you too. You need to understand that. Um, I have a GoFundMe page. I need help in getting legal fees. So I could take legal action against these three judges. Um, please share this video. If you're an investigative reporter, investigate. Um, you can go to Judge Sarah Heidel is a racist and there's a contact information. And you can email me and call me. And I can give you detailed information. I can show you um, documentation as to everything that happened to me. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I'm hoping that I've told you all the things that I needed to tell you. And I appreciate you watching. And you, if you're following me and you got my back, I appreciate you. Okay, you guys, I'm actually editing this part in after the fact. I've already uploaded the other, um, I'm uploading the other footage for this video. But I knew it was some things that I wanted to say. And specifically, I want to say this to you. I want to talk about this really quickly. Um, primarily, I need y'all to know this is not about me being disgruntled about my divorce. Okay? I'm over my husband. I stayed with him way longer than I should have. Um, this is about justice. Okay, I spoke out in the court multiple times to let her know that I knew that she was doing this to me because my husband is white and I'm black. Um, in terms of demonstrating racism in America by authoritative figures, I'm letting y'all know this is a clear case. This is a primary great example of a white husband and a black woman. Okay? It happens in the judicial system. I am editing this part in because my heart hurts for this. You guys can know learn about this young man on the 13th Amendment, a documentary on Netflix. I believe his name was Khalif Browder. He was arrested for supposedly stealing a backpack. This young man was in prison three years because he didn't get a court date for stealing a backpack. You go and watch the footage and my and brother, I love you brother and I'm here for you. You know, <laughs> you racist judges, y'all did it to the right one because whatever happens, I'm not going to stop to the world knows who y'all are because you're not going to keep doing this to black people. This young black brother could, he could have um, said he was guilty. He stayed in Rikers Island for three years because he was accused of stealing the backpack. The judge told him if you, if you give a plea, I'll say time served. If you, if you plead guilty, this young brother had integrity. He was trying to do what's right. His 
bail was ten thousand dollars. He couldn't come up with bail for ten thousand dollars. So this wasn't a wealthy young man. He had come from wealth. He had come from at middle class average. He was not able to come up with bail for ten thousand dollars. So it tells you where he is economically. But in terms of um, ethically, morally, he did what was right. He, he stayed in jail for three years in Breckers Island prison, was assaulted by guards, not given food. And this young man was trying to save you. Go back to the documentary. He says, I'm trying to do what's right. That means his mother raised him. A weaker person would have just took the, the, the plea. And what I'm telling you, what kind of judge put a boy in prison for three years waiting for a trial? What type of judge does that? Savage judges, barbaric racists do that. Y'all go back and look at the 13th Amendment. This young brother eventually was released, they dropped the charges because he steadfast and was convicted in his belief. So he's not a criminal. He's not unethical. He didn't steal anything. If, if you're going to steal a backpack if, or whatever, are you going to stay in jail for three years and wait for a trial? Or are you just going to take a plea? We're talking about morals and ethics. His mother eventually died. What would have happened if you guys go and see? He committed suicide. And... Yo, I'm suffering, okay? But the biggest effects of racism in America is where our mental health is suffering. My husband said mental health failed. I helped him study for his credentials. He took the test three times. I read the books. I learned about mental health. I know a lot about mental health. And black people were suffering. How? What, what did it do to every black person to see them put their knee on George Ford's neck? What it does it do to black people to know they murdered McLean, Elijah McLean, when he was a cute little kid getting juice going home? If you're a black person and you live in America, how, how can you not be dealing with some kind of emotional pain? How could you not? And let me tell you something, y'all. <laughs> I'm about accountability. They did me. Yeah, y'all, you know, <laughs> my husband laughs when I talk to him. He thinks it's funny. He's using his wife's privilege against his black wife. And he got a, 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 a black child. And he thinks it's funny, all oh, the thing that they did to me. He laughs. And he enjoys my suffering. This young brother, Khalif Broden, he was trying to make a difference. He ended up killing himself. Because he, he probably relived all the shit that happened to him. What kind of judge puts a young black man in jail for three years while he waits for a trial? At minimum, he could have let him out on his own with cognizant. This is America. And y'all, it's time for change. And change ain't just about showing Amy Cooper lying about a black man. Change is about going out in the street protesting. Change is about changing the laws. And with white people, you have to embarrass them and you have to hit them in the pocket. That's how you get change. Y'all help me get change. Tell your friends to pull up. Yeah.